So I listened to Who Built the Moon, and for about three days, I was like, look, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. And then I was like, who am I kidding? So to tell you how I really feel, there's one song I absolutely love, one that's okay, and then there's the rest. So the worst part of this album is the lyrics are this weird mix of nonsensical and basic, where it's like he wrote a bunch of songs with bland, boring lyrics, and then just switch the order of them a little bit and other things like that to make it harder to understand, but that doesn't make it deep. Fort Knox, I actually liked the beginning. It had some good energy, but then the chanting hit, and the chanting was bad, and it just got worse from there, and completely fell apart by the end. Holy Mountain, and everyone's like, oh, Holy Mountain, that's the good one on the album. It's like this bad pre-Elvis old-timey song, and at the end, he just keeps chanting, you fell, you fell right under my spell. And it's like, if you haven't bought into the song by that point, it's just brutal. Keep on reaching is just this nothing blase song. And then he keeps chanting, can you keep a secret throughout? And it's just, it's cringe. It's a beautiful world, the corniest course. It's a beautiful dream. It's a beautiful life. It's a beautiful world. Everything of mine is all right. And then the French, the French. The only explanation for this is that one of the French lines is, it's only the end of the world. There was a movie that was pretty big that was French that is called, the, oh, it's only the end of the world. Maybe it's a reference to that, but that's such a reach. There's just no reason for this horrible little French interlude in the song. She taught me how to fly. He actually says this in the course. She told me to fly. She taught me how to fly. She raised me up and now I can fly. That's the course. Be careful what you wish for. It's just crap, and it's crap that drags on and on way longer than crap should. Black and White Sunshine, I think this is another one. I heard some people on Twitter saying it was one of the good ones. It's, no, it's not. And then Interlude, Wednesday, Part 1. When you have a great album and you have a goofy title, it's good. When you have a terrible album, the goofy title just looks stupid. Also, the interlude has nothing to do with the next song. That's what an interlude is supposed to be. It doesn't just mean tiny song no one cares about. And at this point, I knew the interlude was bad from what everyone said. And I got to it and I'm like, I have not liked a single song yet. And I really had given up on the album by this point. If Love is the Law, again, it's like a bad 50s song. It's like something my dad would listen to, except my dad actually has good taste in music, so he'd listen to good music of this type. All right, finally we get to The Man Who Built the Moon, and we get good lyrics for the first time. Got nowhere to go, any road will get us there. That's a good lyric. It's got this great, kind of creepy vibe. Reminds me of Tim Burton, Nightmare Before Christmas, or the used bird and a worm. It's got this creepy animal imagery. He's hitting these chords that are very dark. This is a decent song. This is the one that was that was decent when I talked about it earlier. And then Wednesday Part 2, a lot better than Wednesday Part 1. And I will say, if I was kind of effed up on drugs, I could see myself really digging this one. It's got great diversity, a lot of different sounds. I wouldn't listen to it sober, but I can see the value in this song. I'm not going to hate on it. And then I almost didn't listen to Dead in the Water because I'm like, this was a terrible album. Why am I going to listen to this weird live song tacked on at the end? But I did, and I'm so glad I did because I loved it. The lyrics, his emotion and his voice, just a haunting chorus. And I'm like, why was more not like this? I just don't understand. It's such a mystery to me. There was nothing on this album that I liked on previous albums of his. On Chasing Yesterday, there were these really cool guitar riffs that was gone on his debut album. There was kind of this mature, cool Beatles vibe at times that was gone. The only nice thing I have to say is that his brother's album, Liam, wasn't very good either. I don't know which is better, but they were both bad. Is that a compliment? I don't know. That's all I can muster. All the critics really liked it. There, that's my compliment. Loved by the critics. Must be a great album. I don't know what I'm talking about. There you have it. If you liked my disappointed whining, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, click my face to subscribe. And if you leave a comment, I'll definitely read it and reply.